Welcome back to the South Coast Showdown. Here we are at Fratton Park and I'm honestly not expecting a good season. We are not a good side for this division and I can see us struggling badly. It's been a tough summer trying to improve the squad. I'm not sure we have at all. But let's go and have a look and see what I have managed to get done. Well, this is the reason for my pessimism in the intro. We are way longer odds than anyone else in this division to win it and therefore favourites for relegation. And that has only got worse with a transfer that has just happened in the last couple of days. So let's show you what those transfers have been that we've been doing this summer. Honestly, ins, there have not been many. We signed Matty Virtue from Blackpool, 350,000. I think he's solid for this level. He's got the sort of numbers that we should be able to compete at this level. We'll be playing him in the, one of the defensive midfield slots. I think he's going to be one of the, the, the Segundo Valante role because we have changed our roles. Let's just have a quick look. Yes, we've got him in there. We've changed these two um, because we spotted that he was quite good as a Segundo Valante and it literally says in, in the description of that that that's very good paired with an Anchorman. And Sorensen can play Anchorman perfectly happily. So we have switched those. Nothing else has changed in the tactic, just that. So, we've got Matty Virtue. We've also got Brian Ojeda, signed on a free from Nottingham Forest. He is also pretty much a Segundo Valente, and again, is decent for this level. So, hopefully, we've got a little bit of depth in that defensive midfield slot, and he can also play the anchor role pretty well. So, we've got cover. I think, I've, I mean, we're not great, in the midfield but we're also not bad and we've got five players who are almost as good as each other so it shouldn't really matter too much who we got in there now James Balagizi was signed to replace cheeky chappy Georgie Kelly who obviously we had that one shot at re-signing him to a new contract he turned it down he refused to have anything to do with any new contract offers so we lost him on a free transfer in the summer I don't even know actually if he has signed for anyone or where he is but this lad despite the fact he can't really finish properly was about as good as we could get and he was on a free he's he was at Liverpool they released him so we have picked him up and in pre-season to be fair I mean you know I play terrible teams in pre-season so his eight goals in four and a bit appearances are to be taken with a pinch of salt but he has looked half decent and now Daniel Barden is a new goalkeeper he is currently our backup despite the fact he's probably actually slightly better than Max O'Leary but I'm giving O'Leary the shot at claiming the first team place because he was basically next man up he was here already and Daniel Barden only wanted backup anyway so we'll give O'Leary a shot at taking it now why, you may ask, do we need O'Leary to take over in goal? It's because Yaros, who was out of contract at the end of this season and refused point blank to sign a new deal, has been sold. I had a promise on, apparently, to accept offers of five and a half million or above. We got some of those. I turned the first few down without realising that promise was there. Then when we got the new ones, I was like, right, OK. They're negotiable, so how about a little more? And we ended up, Brighton made a bid, we pushed up to 7.5 million, other people matched that. He chose Brighton, so he's actually in our division, which is lovely, because he'll get to stand there and keep a clean sheet against us. But it was 7.5 million quid that we really can't turn down, and hence the reason for Barden coming in. Of course, if Aaron Bjornsson could ever get a work permit, maybe we wouldn't have needed him. But, now, people going out... Anyone clear out? No, no one cleared out at the end of last season. So, Callum Hendry, obviously, we fell out with him. He went on a free. He's gone to Hamilton. Uh, Aaron Bjornsson is back on loan in Israel. Oko Flex, who just wasn't really good enough 
to be honest for this level most of these numbers are not really high enough the game loves him because he's got pace which presumably is why Anderlecht have signed him it's their business Matthias Roberts I didn't really want to let him go he's not quite good enough for this level but he's also quite young and got a reasonable amount of potential and the problem we had was he was never going to get a game I could have loaned him out obviously but he was just like sort of fourth on on the depth chart sort of thing and I couldn't see anything in keeping him so we got we got some money for it basically which at the time I think I was trying to actually fund a deal that didn't actually end up going through but um, it's been that sort of summer uh, now a couple of players out on loan Roddy McGlinchey who has been out on loan recently was never going to be good enough so we sold him Adoniran ran out of his contract at the end of last season but sort of stuck around on a month to month I was like well I don't think in the roles we now want to play that you're quite up to it but if you have it stickier you know on a month to month basis fine I'll leave you and then two weeks into the um, new sort of season basically Blackpool picked him up on a free so we lost him but he doesn't really do the roles I mean he it says he can do it here but his finishing and his marking aren't great his concentration's poor so he has gaps in his game there and he really can't do Anchorman so we ended up losing him but we've had a decent pre-season as you can see we've been absolutely smashing local sides <laughs> of late very disappointed with the draw against Boston we were 2-0 up with 10 minutes to go and somehow didn't manage to win I don't understand it but then I didn't arrange these friendlies as you can see they're all away from home I always uh, play at home but uh, team cohesion is good club atmosphere is good even the support for me is half decent and boy have we had some trouble with that but I'll try and fill you in on that during the game if we get to uh, some free time this is going to be our starting lineup we'll go to the team selection so yeah O'Leary in so Curtis Kirk Boyle uh, Richards is in because uh, James Husband is suspended but otherwise that back four would generally be all here last season Sorensen obviously here last season Virtue new Knight has moved back out wide Trevitt in the middle Ginelli and Pozzo so most of this lineup was here last season okay here we go away West Brom they are about eighth or ninth in the betting for the title so okay there we go pressure's all on them <sighs> Let's just try not to embarrass ourselves, lads. Yeah? What do you reckon? It's our first game back at this level for, well, over a decade, I think. Traviot. Not so, no. Oh, flashes over the bar. Skims the bar, in fact. Hmm. I don't want to press on that because I don't want to stretch us unnecessarily. Okay. Oh, they're giving it away. Ginelli skips past. Oh, he's been fouled. <clears throat> Bogle brings Ginelli down. And Matty Virtue steps up and puts Portsmouth into the lead. Well, <clears throat> what's so? Okay, Sorensen gets it back out to Trevitt. Into Ginelli again. Back to Trevitt. Oh! To the outside of the post. It's all Portsmouth at the moment. Risk a bit of praise. Oh, God. See? 
Game knew I was going for the praise button. Oh my lord. Well, O'Leary kept it out. Oh, hello. Oh, I thought you might nick in there. Yeah, that wonderful angle, which makes it look like it's over the line, but because of the angle, clearly it's not. <sighs> I really need to sort that out for future editions of this game, because that's just poor that it never shows you an angle where you can actually see whether it was in or not. Trevitz. Ryan Trevitt. 2 0 Portsmouth. <clears throat> it was an infamous day in uh, Portsmouth Southampton rivalry. Actually, took place at the Hawthorns and indeed finished 2 0, but the other way round. As Portsmouth lost to West Brom on the last day of the season, relegating Southampton in the process. 2004 5, in case you're interested. A remarkable last day of the season, in fact, um, where all four teams who could have gone down were actually safe at one point during the day. West Brom, of course, ended safe and stayed up. Anyway, a little bit of football history. Um, now, find another gear, take charge of the match. Loving it so far, boys. They've made a substitution. This I like. I like nothing happening. Now, I was going to tell you about our... Uh, club atmosphere shenanigans but I'm a bit too nervous to, <laughs> to take my eyes off of this game at the moment. Right, let's put Scotty Banks on for maybe if he's taken a knock we'll get Balagizi on because Pozzo seems to have gone off the boil second half everyone else can stay as they are Richards who the fans weren't overly happy about me re-signing, although that uh, I mean, the fans are never really bloody happy here. Oh, Trevitt scores again. It's 3 0. Well, there is absolutely no way I was expecting this. Right, let's just kill the game off a bit, lads. Um. Yeah, regroup, hold shape when you win it. A little bit more effort there. You might have got that, Virgie. Oh, go on. Go on, lads. Go on. On the counter. Go on, Josh. Make a move. Well, there you go. Oh, that's selfish. If you'd have been a bit more lively at the start of that, who knows? Well, let's dish out some praise just before the finish. Oh, Boyle makes it four. That near post corner. I don't know if it's the update they've done recently, but near post corners and corners in general seem to be absolutely deadly now. We didn't used to score from them anywhere near as much as we do now. So it was quite weird because they used to be really powerful and they toned it down when they brought this version out. And now, they seem to be massively overpowered again. But I'm loving it, because we take near post corners. Oh, good work. All right, come on, boys. Let's let's not give... Oh, that's a beautiful ball through. I love your optimism, son. You are 4-1 down still. I mean, this, look at this. This just sliced us apart. Oh, yeah. He's got... Got the run on him there. Was it you? I don't know. It's not telling me who you are. Probably more to cover your embarrassment than anything else, but... Well... 4-1. <laughs> Who'd have thought that? Oh, if it wasn't for that late goal, it would have been 4-0, clean sheet. But still, we will take that as a start to the season. And 
I mean, they dominated possession, but again, it's not possession that wins games. It's what you do with it that counts, and we did a lot. Might even put us top of the table. Well, soak in that sight, people. We are top of the league. You will not see us there again, I doubt, this season. But I could not have asked for a better start. That was fantastic. I cannot believe we managed to do that. Maybe that's what happens when you don't just, you know, completely rejig your side from one summer or from one season to the next. It's pretty much all those players were here last season. So, whew. well, now we will come back. I think I am promising to come back for Champions League football for Southampton, so it'll probably be in September somewhere. We've got Ipswich in the EFL Cup first round. The second round might well have been played before then as well. So whether we're still in that, I'm not sure. But, and I'm pretty sure we won't be top, but we will come back somewhere in September to uh, continue the season. But thank you for joining me this time. And like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye bye for now.